Hey Geography Peeps, so Brazil is one of the largest countries in the world. Obviously, I won't be able to cover everything within about 10 minutes. I'll try to do my best, but in the meantime, soccer, monkeys, Amazon, Ronaldo, and Samba songs, Capoeira, Anacondas, Carnaval, and attractive people that kind of have like tan skin. Oh, come on guys, you knew that was coming. It's time to learn geography. No! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbie, I guess that's a thing now, and after weeks of anticipation, we finally finished the Brazil video, and you know how we start these things, let's dissect the flag. The flag of Brazil has a green field with a yellow rhombus in the middle and a blue disc in the center with 27 stars scattered throughout the disc and the country's motto depicted on a white band sprawled across the blue disc. Some people might tell you that the green represents forests and yellow represents gold, but yeah, that's not really true. The green and yellow are actually inspired from the former imperial flag of Brazil, which was derived from two royal households, the green representing the house of Braganza for King Dom Pedro I, and the yellow for the house of Habsburg that his wife Maria Leopoldina came from. The blue disc and the stars are what make up the most fun part of this flag. Each star represents one of the 27 states of Brazil. Furthermore, they are all separated into nine different constellations that you can typically see in the southern hemisphere. Straddling across the blue disc is a banner with the country's motto, Ordem e Progresso, which means order and progress. A flag with stars representing each state in the country. Ah, Brazil, I think there's some people that can gel well with that. Now here's where things get a little fun because each section of Brazil kind of has its own little story. But first, Brazil is the largest country in the South American continent. If you grew up in Latin America, you would have been told that both South and North America are together one continent, but for pragmatic definitional reasons, we're just gonna treat South America as a separate entity as its own continent. Brazil's domain stretches all the way from the Atlantic coast and deep into the interior of the continent. Brazil is bordered by every single South American country except for Ecuador and Chile. You could also technically say that Brazil borders France. Why? Because of this little guy. French Guiana. That's right, this is not a country, but rather an overseas territory of France. It's okay, raise your hand if you just learned that. You're learning. The country's capital is the aptly named Brasilia, located slightly inland in the central west region of Brazil, and actually administers itself in its own federal district, much like Washington, D.C. Brasilia was actually built in 1960 as they were switching from the old capital, Rio de Janeiro. That's right, it's pronounced Rio de Janeiro, not Rio de Janeiro. Get it right, we're not in Mexico, this is Portuguese, not Spanish. This was done in an attempt to provide a more regional new neutrality for the rest of the states in Brazil by centralizing the capital. Brazil is divided into 27 federal units, 26 of which are states and one federal district, which is where the capital resides. Each state and region of Brazil has their own unique flavor that they bring to the table, and we'll discuss more about that in the demographics, but essentially it kind of goes like this. We grow food. We got all the money. We are so black. We are so white. Stop cutting our trees. In terms of disputes, Brazil has two disputed areas with Bolivia on the Mamore River and two disputed areas with Uruguay on the Uruguay River and in the Masoyer Rivera that nobody cares about. Funny backstory, Uruguay actually used to be part of Brazil known as the Cisplatina province, yada yada yada, there was a war, they gained their independence. Brazil has a ton of islands off their coast, but the furthest reaches of the Brazilian domain would have to be the four island and archipelago chains in the Atlantic, Fernando de Noronha, the Rocas Atoll, the St. Peter and St. Paul Rocks, which is a non-permanent residence science lab station, and Trindade and Martin Vaz. Otherwise, the western mainland borders look kind of Funny. If you look at the map, it kind of looks like Brazil has River Tourette Syndrome, in which they have a lot of half rivers, but then they jump onto the next adjacent river, which is like a couple hundred kilometers away. It's like, eh, I'll take part of the Rio Acre, but then, eh, I'll cut through and make my way over to the Rio Puros. I'll take the Rio Santa Rosa, but then, eh, I'll jump over to Rio Breu. This all had to do with centuries of disputes with the former empires, and today you have this massive piece of sovereign complexity. And that's just the borders. Wait till you see what's inside the borders. When you think of Brazil, everybody just kind of automatically defaults to one image, the Amazon. And yes, the Amazon is a very imperative factor to the nation's domain. However, there's a lot more to it in terms of landscape and terrain. First of all, about 60% of the entire Amazon rainforest is located in Brazil, mostly in the North region, and of course, no surprise, consists of the most heavily compact ecoregion on Earth. Out of all the 10 million species of animals and insects known to human beings, about half of them call the Amazon rainforest home. Many of the species that have yet to be discovered are still lingering about in the deep, uncharted depths of the Amazon today. Now, we all know that there's a huge deforestation problem going on in Brazil in the Amazon to provide more agricultural land. However, even Brazil's own citizens are harshly criticizing the action. It's a little tricky, though, because with Brazil's rapidly growing population, more resources are demanded of the people. So it's kind of like, we get it, it's bad, but I mean, what do you want us to do? Our country is growing and we need to provide you people with more stuff. Use alternative methods! Like what? 
We're working on it! Otherwise, outside of the Amazon, the rest of the country has a vast array of contrasting scenery almost equally as fascinating. Along the coast, you have the Mata Atlantica, or the Atlantic Forest, the Cerrado, or the tropical savannas in the center. This is also the area where most farms and ranches can be found. Also, keep in mind, Brazil is one of the top countries in meat production and exports. In the south, you have the Araucaria, or the pine evergreen forests. In the north, you have the small mountains, especially close to the border of Venezuela, in which you can find one of the most notable natural landmarks being the tripoint border between Venezuela, Guiana, and Brazil, Mount Roraima, even though Brazil only owns about 5% of the mountain. But still, it counts! Roraima is one of the strangest looking flat top plateau mountains with vertical cliffs almost perpendicular to the ground, earning it the label as one of the hardest mountains to climb. Fun side note, Mount Roraima was one of the areas that inspired the scenery for the Pixar movie Up, which is a great movie. By the way, go ahead, watch it. And with that said, Pixar and Disney, you can't sue me for copyright infringement rights for using a clip of your movie in my corner box here because in accordance with fair use limitation rights, I commented and gave a critique on your material. Just letting you know, you can't sue me. One of the most remarkably bizarre and unusual spots of the country though would have to be the famous flooded deserts of the Nsois Maranes. This place located on the north coast of the Maranao state is almost alien-like as there are virtually no places like it on earth. Essentially, it's a sand dune desert with abundant lagoons speckled throughout the entire region. Although it gets a lot of rainfall yearly, the area supports little vegetation and wildlife. Nonetheless, the area draws in thousands of tourists yearly as it contains the almost paradoxical juxtaposition of elements in its scenery. It's not every day that you see a flooded desert. All right, let's talk about the Brazilian people. Biscoito, bolacha, biscoito, bolacha. Yeah, we'll explain what that means in a little bit. But first, now of course Brazil is incredibly diverse, but before we get into that little pie graph thing of jiglet that we always do here in the demographics section, I feel like it's very crucial to mention one important thing about Brazil's people. Now, everybody knows that one of the most dramatically unique traits of Brazil would have to be its people. When asked, what do you think a Brazilian looks like? The stereotype is somebody with a perfectly bronze toned body and with slight dramatic features. One reason why this stereotype type has been perpetuated so extensively is because, in a strange way, it's kind of true. Over the course of a few hundred years since colonization, Brazil's population has actually virtually invented an entirely new race that never exactly existed before, and it makes up nearly half of the entire population. I'm talking about the Pardo people. Now, although the definition is vague and up for relative dispute, essentially this is the easiest way I can describe it. Pardo people are kind of like people that are either too white to be black or too black to be white, and there's probably a little bit of Amerindian in there. That being said, now let's jump into the pie graph. Brazil has about 202 million people, making it the fifth most populous country in the world, right behind Indonesia. About 47% of the people identify as white, about 43% identify as pardo, about 8% are black, 1.5 Asian, and a very small portion, about 0.5% of the population, are Amerindian. Speaking of Asians, at about 1.5 million strong, Brazil is actually the country with the largest Japanese population outside of Japan, about 70% of whom live in the city of Sao Paulo. Asians have actually historically been migrating to Brazil for centuries. In terms of socio-regional distinctions, Brazil has quite the buffet of ethnic and for one, you can typically find more black people in the north, and especially in the Bahia state, where they make up over half of the entire population. This is also the area where you can disputably find some of the best capoeira masters in the world, as it is believed to have originated in this area. In the south, and more specifically in the Rio Grande do Sul state, you have one of the largest white populations in the entire country, with immigrants coming from places like Germany, Italy, and the Netherlands. In fact, many of these places have remained relatively untouched by the rest of Brazil, and many of the communities still retain the mother language of the country, the members of the community came from. Oh, and there's a joke in Brazil that nobody has met anybody from the state of Acre. It's so far and secluded that you may as well just call it North Bolivia. It's mine, Brazil! Nope, too bad. We won it in the war. It's still ours. Deal with it. Then, of course, you have the various native tribal groups. There are about 240 tribes that a little over 900,000 people claim to be a part of ethnically. The government has recognized 690 territories and reservations for these various people groups that make up about 13% of the entire country's landmass, nearly all of it localized in the Amazon rainforest. Brazil's governmental agency for tribal tribal peoples has a list of about 80 uncontacted tribal groups that deliberately choose to remain disconnected from the rest of the world. The governmental agency speculates that there are still many unnamed, undiscovered tribes currently living in the vast, uncharted forests of the Amazon. Culture-wise, it really depends on where you are in Brazil, but everybody knows that Brazil kind of has a very vibrant way that they carry themselves out to the rest of the world. The center of culture disputably being Rio de Janeiro and the economic capital being Sao Paulo. Most of the population lives within driving distance of the coasts, so there is, in a sense, a prevalent 
beach culture, especially for the people on the east side of the country. Not everybody in Brazil loves soccer. In fact, many places prefer basketball, and skateboarding has actually been a huge thing that's been exploding over the past few years. And no, not everybody has been to a carnival. Oh, and another thing, there's currently a war going on in Brazil. It's been very brutal, it's been going on for decades, and it's getting quite intense right now. I'm talking about the cookie war. In Brazil, people will ridicule you if you pronounce the word for cookie differently from them, and especially it's a whole Rio versus Sao Paulo thing. People in Sao Paulo will call it bolacha, and the people in Rio will call it biscoito. This conflict has led to the violence and deaths leading in the victimization of people caught in the crossfire, and <laughs> you almost fell for it, didn't you? <laughs> now let's talk about their relationships. Now, Brazil kind of gets along with everyone, but he's kind of like that friend that ventures off and does whatever he wants while you wait in the hallway until he comes back from doing whatever he's doing. First off, pretty much all of their neighbor nations get along with them, although Argentina has a huge competitive hatred for Brazil when it comes to soccer. But all that aside, they have good relations and trade policies. Then, just like mentioned before the Angola video, they get along with other nations of the former Portuguese empire like Angola, Mozambique, Sao Tome and Principe, Cabo Verde, and so on. They even get along with Portugal and have no bitterness towards the former colonization. Now, when it comes to the U.S., for centuries they've been good friends and have a deep history of trade and alliances. However, recently Brazil has been kind of diddle-doddling off making friends with other people that kind of give the U.S. in the old shifty eye. Then we have Venezuela and Cuba. Brazil has sided with the Venezuelan government more in the past few decades and has built a 1.5 billion dollar port in Cuba. Then we have Iran. Recently, Brazil has been testing the waters on attempting to build ties with them, although they haven't really improved much recently. Nonetheless, Brazil is quite the popular guy. Not many people dislike Brazil, except for maybe the Brazilians in Brazil that may complain about their own country's administrative affairs, but that's a lesson you'll have to learn by talking to an actual Brazilian person, not me. Plus, we're almost out of time. In conclusion, Brazil is so much more than just the Amazon and soccer, and we didn't even scratch the surface of Brazil in this video. And to find out more, I recommend just talk to a Brazilian. Just remember which side of the cookie you're on. Stay tuned, Brunei is coming up next. Ugh. Hey Jabba Peeps, once again, this episode was The Motion Graphics were done by my good friend Jason King. Hey, Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hey, look at how complicated all this stuff is, all the motion <laughs> tracking. Uh, Jason, any words you want to say very quickly before we run out of the credits? No, I'm just having a lot of fun making people play soccer. Yes. Well, countries. Countries playing soccer, as you can see, Brazil yeah. and Argentina. Thank you, Jason. You are amazing. <laughs> That's it.